Well, let's go. Hello, welcome to the latest video. This one's about the worst week of my life or my most traumatic week, which it really wasn't because I've had a quite a few traumatic weeks in my time. This was certainly up there. Basically, I'll tell you exactly what happened and what the legend, Jerry Lee Lewis, the killer, said to me. You'll be shocked after this. What happened was, I'd started the Rhythm Festival and Jerry Lee Lewis was the Sunday headliner. A legendary Jerry Lee Lewis, 1950s rock and roller, troubled life, 14 year old bride, etc. But some great piano playing, for example. Sunday headliner at the Rhythm Festival in Bedford and to make it financially viable I had to bring him over to the UK from the States he lived quite near Memphis I had to bring him and his entourage and his band the killer band over and pay for their airfares which was quite expensive and pay them a fee and put them up in a five-star hotel because Jerry Lee Lewis at the time this is August of 2006 he's not very well he couldn't work three days on the spin. So to make it even worse, we had to give him nights off. So the way it worked was, we flew him in, put him up in the hotel, which I think was on the Thursday, in London, because that was where he was based. That's where his final show of the tour was going to be. So the tour was Sunday the 6th of August at the Rhythm Festival, Clapham, Bedfordshire. Wednesday the 9th, Wolverhampton Civic Theatre. And on Saturday the 12th, at the end of the tour, at the Shepherd's Bush Empire in London. Now, he had two guys who generally drove him around in big Rain Rovers, which I believe were owned by Rob, who was a fruit and vegetable merchant. I think he specialised in potatoes up in the Manchester area. So the other guy whose name I'm afraid has slipped my mind was the manager of a co-op up in the north somewhere. They were friends anyway, and they drove him around they didn't charge me anything, although I had to pay for their hotels and put them up and pay, obviously, the expenses. So basically, we had Jerry Lee Lewis's entourage, which I can't remember exactly who it was. It consisted of him, obviously, his daughter. There was a shady guy with long, with a ponytail who people told me was a drug dealer from Memphis, I'm not sure, whose name also escapes me, but it was something like KT Osley. It wasn't that, but it was something initials followed by a name who was on the face of it, his tour manager and his daughter was in charge really and then there's the band obviously and then there was there were one or two other people i'm not exactly sure i think one of them was his son and then there was like his best friend from school all these other people who i don't know who they were you have to pay for everything these two guys rob and his friend drove him around um in these range rovers so that was one headache I didn't have to worry about. Now I booked the show from an American agent in Florida I think it was and it was a very strange negotiation because the guy was frankly quite rude. Well I say rude he was like brusque he was like you would imagine an American film mogul would be in a Hollywood movie like he shouted at me and 
dicks in that. Well, I do apologise if what I said just now seemed a trifle brusque. Brusque? It was rude, Mr. Faulty. I said rude. Well, I'm deeply sorry if it came over like that. I mean, nothing could have been further from my mind. But, but anyway, it's not the point. The contract was quite strange too. Even though the contract was for a 35-minute show. Jerry Lee Lewis would only be on stage for 20 minutes. The rest of the time would be just the band doing a warm-up. But the thing is though, he had his American band with him and they were very good, led by a guy called Kenny Lovelace. Basically, so I got on very well with the band. I got on very well with these two guys from the North who were driving. I didn't get on quite as well with Jerry Lee Lewis and his daughter Phoebe. On the face of it, I did, but we went and picked them up at the airport. Heathrow Airport. I went with the guy who used to work with me, who was driving me, who was one of my security men at the 100 Club when I was doing shows. And so he and I drove in his car and we arranged to meet these two guys from the north at Heathrow. And I think that Jerry Lee Lewis came off the plane in a wheelchair, which, which obviously wasn't ideal. So, we picked them up, we took them to this hotel, which I got them a very nice hotel. I'd negotiated a very good deal at a hotel right by Tower Bridge. I got Jerry Lee Lewis a fantastic suite which had a plate glass window and the view at the plate glass window was astounding. It was spectacular. I only saw it for about two minutes frankly but it was the best view you could ever get in London. It was this part, it was on the top floor of this hotel and it was the panoramic view of Tower Bridge, the Tower of London and the river and South London and all the green hills beyond and it looked fantastic. So anyway, got this hotel and the band was staying in and the entourage and Phoebe and everybody else were staying in smaller rooms in the same hotel. But it was still a five star hotel. It wasn't that expensive. It was quite expensive but I managed to get this deal because we're staying there for the whole week. So don't forget the same time this is happening I was also trying to run the Rhythm Festival so I was up there as well and we had to come down to London to pick him up and all this and so we weren't there for long. We came down to do it and I thought it'd be quite straightforward. I'd already paid the hotel half the money up front I think it was which was quite a lot I mean it's thousands and everything was going to be happy and I could get back up to settle them in then go back up to Bedfordshire and get on with the festival which I think was due to start the following day. There we were go to the hotel and the manager catches my eye and pulls me over and says, Mr. Driver, could you come into my office, please? So I go into his office and he says, we have found out who this, who the guests are and we're not very happy about it because he's a rock and roller. He's been known to trash rooms. I'm going, look, he's ill. He's in a, a wheelchair. He, he can barely stand up, so he's not going to trash his room, is it? And all the guys in the band are in their 70s, I think it was. So anyway, regardless of that, the manager wanted me to pay all the hotel fees up front. The problem was that I'd already sent all the money, literally every penny of what he was going to get to the States. And nobody was paying me anything. The festival hadn't started yet. I paid all the acts up front. It was like a total nightmare. Financially, I was in a very tight spot. So I seriously didn't have the rest of the money for the hotel because I thought that I'd get paid at, at the final show because the final show was going to pay me in cash for the for the ticket sales and then I was going to pay for the hotel and blah 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 and everybody would be happy and everybody would have been happy. So I was, cut long story short, I had to ring up my wife who was definitely not not so happy about this. I'd already maxed out all my um, credit cards and believe me I had quite a few. So she came along and she thankfully paid the rest of the money which is thousands of pounds for this hotel. But she wasn't best pleased, I could tell. We subsequently e divorced and I think that this was mentioned during the e divorce petition. So to make of that what you will. So anyway, she went back to South London where we lived. Maybe you could see our house from that suite, probably, but I never did find out. So anyway, she went away. I went upstairs with Jerry Lee Lewis, went into the room, said, look at this, isn't this fantastic? And the first thing he did was, was close the curtains 
of the picture window, a huge picture window. And as far as I know, they stayed closed until after he'd gone. So that was a complete waste of money. My abiding memory of Jerry Lee Lewis that day was he was crawling on the floor in his Y fronts, heading towards the cord that would have closed the curtains. I just watched him with horror, thinking, wow, this is actually quite surreal. While his daughter was laying down the law about what we're gonna do and what we're not gonna do. So, so anyway, that was actually fun. So I went back up to Bedfordshire to the festival. That was like a bit of a traumatic. Bear in mind, this day started about three o'clock in the morning because I think we were staying in a hotel in Bedford. We had to drive down to Heathrow to pick him up. I think he was arriving at about 7.30 or something like that. So, so anyway, there we go. That's the first day of this. It was quite a trauma. And then I had Rhythm Festival. Phoebe did an unfortunate thing because um, even though I was told about this by the hotel staff, she would go down to the gym each day and she would take a handful of water out of the minibar in the room, take it down with her. And as far as I was told, she never actually drank it. So then she'd put it back in the minibar when she came back. Now, every time she took it out or put it back, the hotel charged me, I think, four pound each for these bottles of water. So this was happening at least once a day, but she wasn't even drinking it. I had actually provided the two driver guys with cases of water for, for everybody to drink water, so they didn't have to, which basically cost me about 50 pence or something at the cash and carry. Identical water, I didn't stint, I, I didn't get the like a cheap water, the cheap Polish water, I got proper British water, also snacks and things if they wanted snacks. So that was all happening there, and then on the Sunday was the day that Jerry Lee Lewis was going to play at the Rhythm Festival, and this is what happened then. So the Sunday morning comes along, I'm at the Rhythm Festival working probably from 6 in the morning through till midnight every day, lots of things going wrong. When you're running a music festival it's like running a whole town, people need to solve problems and so you soon get into the flow of saying yes, 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 no, no, yes, no and all that so that's good. So anyway the Sunday morning comes along and I get a phone call from somebody I actually knew who ran a bar in London whose part of his business plan was to, I would say, ingratiate himself with stars and celebrities and so he said look I've got um, Pete Doherty who at the time was from the Libertines, quite a hot indie band at the time and his girlfriend was Kate Moss and the tabloid press were all, all over them and it was like constantly. So they wanted to come up and see Jerry Lee Lewis and they wanted to bring an entourage of people with them. I didn't get to see them personally because I was too busy doing the stuff at this festival. They really mix with the stars. But they brought a lot of famous people with them and I didn't actually get to the, to the bottom of who they, they all were. But they were like a load of people who you would go, oh, that's, um, oh, wow. Oh. So it's a bit like that. So if they want to come and bring them, of course, even though they're all not, maybe not millionaires, but certainly going in that direction, there's no question of paying me for their tickets or anything. And then when they get there, they were expecting for, for me to provide them with food and drink and things, which I obviously did. Other things to do and lots of, then we had Chas and Dave come in and all these other people. It was artistically a great success, if financially not very good. But luckily, the Jerry Lee Lewis tour was doing financially better so the way things were working out and of course we were selling more and more tickets the whole time because like he hadn't been in London much and the London show was starting to sell lots so that was all very hopeful so the thing about my game in the music industry was that when things didn't go well you, you it always helped if you had something to look forward to that might dig you out of all your, your problems. Normally it didn't actually work out like that, but so anyway, Jay Lewis come and it's not the most luxurious dressing room. We had four containers, I think they were, you know, old storage containers that you send on ships around the world, but they were quite nice, you know, they were like quite well air pointed with chairs and tables and things, and we put snacks and food and drink in them for the acts and we fed them and all the rest of it. So they're sitting in these things. And there's um, somewhere around the place, there's Kate Moss and Pete Doherty and all these other famous people around. And so anyway, time comes to Jerry Lewis to go on stage and the band are on and they're playing their thing. It's sounding good and everybody's happy and everybody's groovy. I think the weather was good. I'm standing in the audience, well, the back of the arena watching it all thinking, thank God, this is finally about to happen. And then he's the final act on on the Sunday and then I can actually have a drink because I, that's one of my things. When I work, I don't drink. Well, mainly because when I have worked 
and had it. A drink, things have gone wrong. So anyway, he's coming out. I noticed from the back of the arena that there's, there's a bit of a kerfuffle on stage. People are being like rushing around and there's things happening and he looks a bit traumatic. For what I can say, I mean, I'm, I'm way back. So anyway, he goes on and he plays and he does his 20 minutes or whatever it was. Anyway, I think he did 21 minutes. If you want to do 20 minutes, that's good, you see. That's one extra. And I think, oh, that's great. And it turned out that what happened was Pete Doherty, for some reason, was a bit out of his head. Surprise, surprise. And he decided look, that, that Jerry Lee Lewis looked a bit hot, so he threw some water on him which is not, obviously not the first thing you'd think of, perhaps. And the security I'd employed to look after Jerry Lee, Lewis leapt forward, grabbed Pete Doherty and, and hustled him away. And of course, Jerry Lee Lewis had no idea who, who this was. I had no idea he was this famous icon of um, British rock. There you go. Um, so he goes on stage and does things. Anyway, there was that, they, the two drivers, because he's a bit shaken apparently, to take him away. I mean, this is the way things work the whole tour. I was never really allowed to speak to Jerry Lee Lewis. And when I did, well, I'll tell you what happened, because I did have a little chat in Wolverhampton, which was the next show. So anyway, that's what happened. The Rhythm Festival was over, and then I think I had one day off, and then we're, and then we're back on the road again on the Wednesday. Wolverhampton Civic Hall, which is a council-owned venue. I think that was a break-even show, so that was okay, that was good. At this stage, I'm more relaxed, because by Wolverhampton, he'd been paid, Jerry Lewis had been paid for his thing. I'd paid, all the halls were like, all the fees were covered for the hire of the rooms. I mean, I paid all the acts for the Rhythm Festival. I had a couple of things to sort out. I think I, think I still owed the, owed the site owner his hire fee, but he was gonna get that in like a week or two, and then we were selling tickets to the next festival. So everything was like on track, and I could relax a little bit. Went to Wolverhampton separately, obviously, because they went up in the Range Rovers, and we went up from Lewisham. So we arrived first, we did the thing, we go meet the manager of the hall, we, we had a good old chat, a cup of tea with them, that's good. Then Jerry Lewis turns up, and I go and see Jerry Lewis about half an hour before he's supposed to be going on stage. I think I was actually um, summoned. Um, the way was barred because they had a security guy who worked for the Wolf Raptor Civic Theatre standing outside the dressing room door and he told that he was not allowed to let anybody in. Now, bear in mind that I was hiring the venue, he was actually working for me, but it turned out that it was, um, it was sorted out and I was allowed in. And then we had this strange conversation. It was generally him saying to his daughter, who is this guy? What's he doing here? And then she says, this is, this is Jim, Daddy, he's he's organising the tour for us. And then, so this is the way it was, and then I'd have to speak to her, and then she'd speak to him, and and actually translate everything I said to him to the Jerry Lee Lewis friendly banter, because I don't think I was particularly Jerry Lewis um, friendly speaking wise. Anyway, that was that, he went on stage, did that, that was Wolverhampton. Another day off, I think the wife was giving me a hard time about this um, £6,000 where she paid the hotel. And then it was Saturday! <laughs> oh, I missed a bit out about grand pianos. Apart from paying him £1,000, I had to hire these grand pianos. And he wanted a full-size concert grand. And Wolverhampton, I'm pretty sure, had one, which was fine. And they, and I think they even paid to have it too. Putting Clapham in Bedford for the Rhythm Festival and the Shepherd's Bush Empire, I literally had to pay thousands of pounds to have a huge grand piano put in. And I don't even know about grand pianos, but the minute you move them, they've got to be totally tuned. So if you put a grand piano down, and this happened at the Shepherd's Bush Jumper, and getting hold of somebody who can actually tune them, especially on Saturday afternoon in London, is either not easy or very expensive, probably both. And at this stage, we put the grand piano where I assumed it would be based on every other show that we'd done with Jerry Lee Lewis, based on his stage plan. And the guy came in and he tuned it and he got hundreds of pounds for tuning this grand piano. Jerry Lee Lewis's people turn up and say he doesn't want the grand piano there, he wants it over there because where the dressing rooms at the Shepherd's Bush Empire are quite a long way from the stage and there's a lift, it's only I think one or two floors, there's a lift and the lift 
was on the opposite side of the stage to where the grand piano was. So what do I do? Do I move the piano, get the stage hands to move the piano, and then get the guy back to retune it and everything to stop for half an hour, and then we're probably gonna just open the doors late and everything, or do I just move the grand piano and hope it's okay? Because frankly, as I've already mentioned, Jerry Lee Lewis wasn't uh, in his peak form. And I did notice at Wolverhampton, where I was standing by the side of the stage, that he only played piano occasionally. Like, the band were doing most of the stuff. So when he had to play the piano, which is obviously at the end for Great Balls of Fire and things like that, and da 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 da, where he, he would be like, but banging away like the best of them. But it wasn't like very musical, that side of it. Whereas the other stuff he did, he did a country song which involved him playing the piano, which he did well, um, I must admit. Normally I know he just puts arms up and down and whether, whether they were hitting the keys, I don't know. So I thought, I, I'm not paying out more hundreds of pounds and possibly um, making the show go late and having to pay fees. Plus as well, let's be fair, it was the last date of the tour, so, and he'd be on stage, and what could he do? Anyway, there you go. So, the Shippers Bush Empire went very well. We had lots of people there from the press, the Daily Telegraph did a whole page on it and pictures all over the place, and it was like a big deal. If I'd known it was gonna be quite a big a deal, I might have paid to have the piano rejumed, but I'm definitely sure that no one had noticed. Well, actually, actually, I think Chas Hodges of Chas and Dave noticed, but he was very nice and didn't actually say anything. He mentioned it to me in passing, and I feigned surprise. Oh, it was two, not an hour ago or something. Anyway, so it went well. Um, I got paid in cash. I got paid off the incidentals. I still owed the security for the Rhythm Festival. I still owe them, I think it's £18,000. So the guy came down and I paid him off and then everybody was happy and they went back to the hotels. I, I went home and then the next morning we were up at the crack of dawn because they had to have a, fl a flight. I think the flight left at nine. As I recall, all these things have been behaved, especially after that week, the worst week of my life. So we got up early the next morning and took them to the airport, waved our fond at farewells, breathed a sigh of relief, and then I said to myself, I am never doing that ever again. In 2008, I booked Jerry Lee Lewis again. So maybe I'll talk about that later. That was, um, that was just as eventful, but not for the same reasons. So there you go. So that was Jerry Lee Lewis and the Rhythm Festival, the worst week of my life. I thought that was the end of it, I was mistaken. More than 10 years later, Phoebe Lewis and her father, Jerry Lee Lewis, went to court. Dateline, May 4th, 2019, Jackson, Mississippi. A federal judge in Mississippi has dismissed most of a lawsuit in which rock and roll pioneer Jerry Lee Lewis alleged his daughter had stolen money from him. U.S. District Judge Neil Biggers ruled that most claims were barred by a three-year statute of limitations. The lawsuit is another fracture in the often difficult personal life of the 83-year-old pianist and singer known as The Killer. The Louisiana native and survivor from the dawn of rock now lives in Nesbitt, Mississippi. Lewis suffered a stroke in February and canceled upcoming performances. Phoebe Lewis Lofton hired a woman then named Judith Brown to be Jerry Lee Lewis caretaker in 2010. Lewis Lofton had been managing her father's career since 2002, depositing all of his earnings into her own bank accounts. Lewis Lofton is the daughter of Jerry Lee Lewis and a woman now named Myra Williams. Lewis married her in 1957 when she was Myra Gale Brown, his 13-year-old cousin. The marriage created a worldwide uproar that seriously damaged Lewis' career. Judith Brown was formerly married to... And um, if you liked it, please like it down below. Thank you for staying to the end. This is a lot longer than my normal ones. If you enjoyed this, there'll be more of the same sort of thing. Subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. That's all, folks.